The Louisiana Purchase, Kamala Harris, and the 49th Parallel are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is October 20th, 2022. It is the 293rd day of the year. You got 72 days left. So get ready for a new New Year's resolution. Today is the 29th day of fall. You got 62 days left until summer. And if it's your birthday, you're still a Libra. Today is World Statistics Day. World Statistics Day is held every five years on October 20th. The day celebrates the achievement of fundamental principles of official statistics. It's strange, I couldn't follow statistics, and I think I've said this before, but I understand statistics. I'm horrible at math. Throw algebra in front of me, I'm totally confused. Give me statistics, I can see patterns, I can see trends. It's weird. Statistics involve collection, analyzing, and interpreting large amounts of numerical data. Statistics are vital. These days, every single industry and almost every single business relies on statistics. Very important to my business and my career. All right, let's see what else October 20th has given us. 1803, the United States Senate ratifies the Louisiana Purchase. <laughs> Now this one we've talked about before because it's a big part of American history. There always seems to be something that went on with the Louisiana Purchase. One thing I've always noticed is most people seem to think, probably because of the name, obviously because of the name, that it was just the purchase of the state of Louisiana. No, there was so much more to it. I mean, it touches a bunch of states. Here are the states, well, present day states that were part of the Louisiana Purchase. At the time, it was just the Louisiana Territory. Arkansas, Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Minnesota, Louisiana, New Mexico, Texas, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Montana, Colorado, and also parts of Canada, Alberta, and Saskatchewan. That's a big chunk of land, and we got it for pretty cheap. The United States purchased the 828,000 square miles of land west of the Mississippi for $15 million. That's about $350 million in today's money, 2022. That's really not a lot of money for about a third of what the United States owns now. They paid roughly four cents an acre and they basically doubled the size of the United States. Now, obviously it worked out in the United States' favor and it was a really smart thing to do, but not everyone was on board. Before, you know, they just had Republicans and Democrats, they had Jeffersonians and Federalists. They had Whigs and a bunch of other things too, but those two political parties didn't think this was a good idea and actually questioned the constitutionality of the purchase. Well, when they proved it was actually constitutional, the Federalists actually came forward and said, no, this land belongs to Spain, not France. Why are we purchasing it from France when it's actually Spain that owns it? Well, that was quickly dispelled and they tried a couple other things to stop this purchase, which in hindsight would have been a horrible thing to stop. I think it was just yesterday's video that we were talking about how a lot of the government thought buying Alaska from Russia was a big mistake. But you know, I mean, Nobody's got a crystal ball, so you never know how things are going to work out. These days, I think we're all happy that we did the Louisiana Purchase and the Alaskan Purchase. 1818, the Convention of 1818 is signed between the United States and the United Kingdom, which settles the Canada-United States border on the 49th parallel for most of its length. There's a couple exceptions, like up in the Great Lake, there's a couple little areas that are below the 49th parallel that belong to Canada, and a couple places above the 49th parallel that belong to the United States. One of my favorites is here in the Pacific Northwest in Washington called Point Roberts. If you want to drive to Point Roberts from the United States, you actually have to go into Canada and almost go into Vancouver. You go a little bit south of Vancouver and then kind of turn back south to enter into Point Roberts. 1944, liquefied natural gas leaks from a storage tank in Cleveland and then explodes, leveling 30 blocks and killing 130 people. Yeah, a lot of bad things have gone on in Cleveland. I mean, in the 1970s, the frickin' lake caught fire. I'm not talking just the docks and some ships there. The lake, the water was so polluted that it caught fire. 1947, the Cold War, the House of Un-American Activities Committee begins its investigation into communist infiltrations in the Hollywood film industry, resulting in the blacklist that prevents some from working in the industry for years. That's a very interesting part of American history, that whole Joseph McCarthy thing, and yeah. You know, he's a perfect example of, he made a speech and he mentioned something, and it got a lot of press. 
and then he ran with it. And I think he was more interested in gaining his own fame than actually finding communists in the United States. I think that was that's just my opinion, but I think that's what he was doing. 1973, the Watergate scandal, the Saturday Night Massacre. The United States President Richard Nixon fires the U.S. Attorney General Elliot Richardson and the Deputy Attorney General after they refused to fire Special Prosecutor Archibald Cox, who is finally fired by Solicitor General Robert Bork. 1977, a plane carrying the rock band Leonard Skinner crashes in a woodland area of Mississippi. Six people, including three band members, are killed, including the lead singer. 1981, Two police officers and a Brinks armored car guard are killed during an armed robbery carried out by members of the Black Liberation Army and the Weather Underground in New York. Movies released on October 20th, 2006, Flags of Our Fathers. This was a great movie. It was directed by Clint Eastwood, and it's one of two movies. It's based on the book of the same name. The film follows the story of men who raised the flag on Iwo Jima and the events in their lives afterwards. Clint Eastwood produced the score and directed it and everything. Now, they had another movie called Letters from Iwo Jima, with Flags of Our Fathers being the American version of the Battle of Iwo Jima, like from the American perspective. Well, Letters from Iwo Jima was the Japanese perspective of the battle. What's really strange is there's this tunnel system on Iwo Jima during the battle that the Japanese had entrenched themselves on this mountain pretty good. And the Marines that were attacking this mountain, they kept hearing these little muffled explosions coming from inside the tunnel system in this mountain. Well, they never find out what it is. When you see letters from Iwo Jima, you find out what it was. And I'm not here for spoilers, so I'm not going to tell you what it was. Born on October 20th, 1964, Kamala Harris, politician who became the vice president of the United States alongside President Joe Biden in 2021. She became the first female vice president in the United States, as well as the first black vice president and the first Asian American vice president. She's mixed race. Prior to her vice presidency, she served in the U.S. Senate for four years. She graduated from Howard University in 1986 with a degree in political science and economics. She went on to receive her law degree from the University of California, Hastings College of Law. She was elected Attorney General of California in 2011. She also served as the District Attorney for San Francisco, where she helped create a special hate crime unit. She was endorsed by President Barack Obama to fill the open Senate seat vacated by Barbara Boxer in 2016. Died on October 20th, 1964, Herbert Hoover, the 31st president of the United States who helped provide humanitarian relief to Belgium during World War I and was best known for his mishandling of the Great Depression. Yeah, that's one of those things they think it was way worse than it should have been because of his inaction. He worked as a student manager for the football and baseball teams while attending Stanford University. He was a mildly prolific author, releasing 16 books during his lifetime, the last which was about fishing, the title Fishing for Fun and To Wash Your Soul. His father was a farmer and blacksmith. He and Harry S. Truman became close friends after World War II, and Truman appointed him to the Hoover Commission with the goal of removing waste and inefficiency from the government. That was a big thing for Harry S. Truman. Back in 1940, he traveled to various military bases to look for waste and things like that, and he found tons of it. He found a lot of people just ripping off the government with, uh, like, contracts that weren't being fulfilled. Eventually, he had a thing called the Truman Committee, which reportedly saved as much as $15 billion for the United States. In 2021 numbers, that's $220 billion. And from what I know about the military, which I'm sure it's in just about every part of the United States, there is a ton of waste that we could probably fix a lot of problems in this country if we got rid of the people basically not fulfilling contracts and the waste that the different agencies in the government continue to do. But Herbert Hoover in later years had some serious illnesses including an August 1962 operation in which a growth in his large intestines was removed. He died on October 20th, 1964 in New York City following massive internal bleeding. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.